Hello up Steelers Nation, it's Steelers Chalk Talk. I'm Tank, he's Mike McMahon, the former NFL quarterback. I'm the former water boy from Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Well, yeah, I'm a more of a clipboard holder. Let's clipboard. Be I mean, I okay. ran around a little bit, you know. I, actually, I played in that stadium, you know, over there, Heinz Field. The Lions played first, against? First preseason game, first game ever, it was the first preseason game. And actually, uh, threw the first touchdown in that stadium. As a Yeah, thanks. You get that? And a bag but of then cookies. I played again uh, right before Christmas that same year when the game actually meant something. <laughs> How'd and, that go? Uh, Jason Gilder broke my foot. <laughs> so No offense. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, Appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. It still hurts to this day. You know, it's just never properly healed, but, but hey, it is what it is. Yeah, right. Well, if you didn't get out of the league with something broken. Hey, it was a swan song. It was a fair be well and thank you for 18 remarkable years. Mike, you know this better than anybody. The average career is what, three and a half, four years in a league? For any player, I don't care if you're a punt returner, no. kick returner. No, it is not. It's not even that long? No, it, it's like... 2.2? 2. It's like 13 games. 13 games? Yeah, you, to get your pension, you you need three years and three games. And uh, not everyone's got their pension. Uh, fortunately, I do, but uh, yeah, it's... Uh, so 18 it, years is a it, remarkable it, it's career. It's extremely, you know, you see the Tom Brady's, you see all, you know, the Michael Strains, all these guys that are on TV, you know, that have had these long careers. There's a lot of guys that are in it for like a cup of coffee. And <laughs> and it's a business and you, it's, it's a very, uh, the top of the top athletes and you gotta just be able to produce. And you know, a lot of it's a little bit getting lucky, you know, staying healthy and, uh, and you look at the way Tom Brady's done it, and he's been able to stay healthy. Uh, and Ben, uh, I think the one thing you can respect about him is he's always put his body on the line. Oh. He didn't necessarily uh, he's a slide or you know or you know or throw the ball away so quick. And and I, I think uh, it says a lot about him. You know, and it, obviously he's not going to be playing as long as Brady has, but it, it's because he put his he put his body on the line for his team, for the city, and and to me, it shows that he is a true competitor. It wasn't, you know, you look at this past season, it wasn't the prettiest, but they still were able to get wins. And and to me, uh, w with all the injuries, with the COVID and all this and all that, to me, it shows a testament to how, how good of a competitor he is and, and how he just loves to play the game. You know, even though a lot of you out there in Steelers Nation, it really riled me up some of the comments I heard about Ben. You know what? As we go into this final game against the Baltimore Ravens, your quarterback is ranked number 13 in the league. Your quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger and Jalen Hurts, well, they lead the league in the least interceptions, Mike. Nine. So if the old man was done, factor that in there. Factor in there, he's 13th aggregately touchdowns interceptions all that yardage thrown number 13 do what you will with that but i'm going to throw something out there and you at home can speculate mike i'm going to throw this out to you i've been asking a lot of people especially a couple people said oh he's done you take ben roethlisberger this year and you put him behind the 1995 dallas cowboy offensive line i know it's a it's a time warp stretch you put him behind the 1995 Dallas Cowboys offensive line. This team has the potential to make a great run at the playoffs, and he's thrown for close to 7,000 yeah. yards. Yeah, I'm going to stop you right for there. For the reason... If my aunt had a mustache, she'd be my uncle, okay? I know, Let's it's not speculation. Go back there. Okay. He's Listen. been nailed 35 times, Mike. Yeah. Brutal, brutal yeah. hits, too. The O-line has definitely... Uh, not been his best that he's had here. Um, did him a great disservice he with did this some, offense. He's line. done some great things. He, you know, he, 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 and I'll be the first to admit when you don't have a good offensive line, your decision making starts to become not as good either because you know you, I got to get rid of it. I got to put up the and. You know, the one thing they've done this year is they put the number one in attempts on that go ball, the fly uh. ball, the fade, the 50-50, and I think it's been too much. But at the same time, you know, it, it's a safe, get it out of your hand, not take a hit type throw. So, you know, they have done some good things, 
you know, well, where the hell was the tight end? I mean, you knew you had a tight end early in the season. They did. In the preseason, you noticed it when he made those two catches. Yeah, touchdowns. but I'm talking about the middle of the field. And and to me, uh, again, you, you can look back at the season, and I, I think it's just a little too much empty early in the season, you know, trying to get the ball to Juju, you know, and I actually think the offense has kind of improved since Juju's been out. I think it's become a little bit more balanced. And you look at what Najee Harris well, has done. Well, that's right there because and, of Najee Harris is where you have your balance. Yeah, and so to me, you know, they're in a position. Now, granted, they have to, they got to get a little help from the Colts. And the Colts are going to Jacksonville and they have not won. Well, in Jacksonville huh. since 2014. Now, I'm not saying Jacksonville's good, but the Colts struggle down there. And if that's the case, now you're going in to play the Ravens, and the Ravens are fighting for a spot, but they have no Lamar Jackson. So the Steelers have a very interesting and capable outside chance of sneaking in the playoffs here. And then you never know what can happen. Well, let's talk about this Monday night performance premised upon your Pittsburgh Steelers getting up for Ben's farewell party and that defense showing up. This is what, well, cuts the wheat from the chaff, whatever you want to say. You knew that Cam Hayward and TJ Snotknocker elevated their games on Monday night. Those two guys alone took over that defensive side of the ball and said, our hero's not going out of here with a loss tonight. Great defensive performance. Secondary, still a little bit suspect. We'll see what 2023 brings. Najee Harris, Mike, on the offensive side of the ball, kudos. This is the first time I'm going to say this all year long to the offensive line. They really stepped up. They jailed. They got on their blocks for the run game. Not only the, the Cleveland Clowns only got to Ben twice, and you know they were looking to, they would have loved to hit, yeah. hit him nine times, sacked him they nine times. But you know, you got a glimpse at what Najee Harris can do oh. with a little help. And that was 188 yards for Najee Harris. I mean, your future is bright with him. Yep. And so now you get, to me, that was Steeler football. They played the Browns. It wasn't the prettiest. It wasn't a, a, a thousand yards, you know? And, and I think Steeler fans kind of got a little greedy with Ben uh, over the years with so much offense. And, but really, if you look back at the history of Steeler football, when they've been done their best, it's always been defense and that run game. And now you got the defense stepped up. They played absolutely great. <laughs> Uh, I'm just a little surprised what the Browns were doing offensively, throwing the ball so often with the way the Steelers' run defense oh. has been struggling. But, hey, good for them. They played right into the Steelers' hands. The Steelers' defense did a great job. T.J. Watt always running around. Oh, Superman. And, and then you got Cam Hayward. But and there's a couple other surprises in the secondary that I saw that were uh, pretty interesting and, and I liked. But, but Najee Harris... He, you get a glimpse of what he's capable of and you are maybe like one or two offensive linemen away from a, another playoff run or Super Bowl run next year and a quarterback. And a quarterback. You Let's know, not because forget that. Ben will be gone. Do you really think Mason Rudolph is the guy that's no. going to be leading? No. Do you, Can Steelers you get Nation? Some, do you want to go with a rookie and take time to build? Or do you want to go out and try to get a veteran that can maybe be a game manager? If you can't get Aaron Rodgers, you know, a lot of people are talking Aaron Rodgers. If you can go out and get him, oh, you're right in the, you're a Super Bowl favorite. But if you can't, maybe a Jimmy Garoppolo, a game manager. Love Jimmy Garoppolo. They're looking Garoppolo. to get rid of Trey Lance out in San Francisco. Jimmy G can come in here, hand the ball off. He knows run game. You see how San Francisco is doing it right now. I think he would be a great fit for the Steelers and for Najee Harris for this future. You know, here's the thing about this Steelers team. Now, Mike and I, at the beginning of the season, we pegged them at a five to six win team. Now, Russell Wilson goes out. Oh my, you get some other breaks come your way. All of a sudden, Mike, the, Titans. the Tennessee, the tall man no of Derek Tennessee, Henry. no Derrick Henry, the horse. Now it's the last week of the season. We still got a chance to go to the playoffs. It, I've made the analogy. This has been an interesting season. It's like watching a guy get eaten by a shark. 
you know in the end the shark's gonna win <laughs> and he's gonna get gobbled up but it's, fu it's he fu entertaining as hell to fight him see him wa fight the shark off you know and that's what this season's been like you, you know they weren't going anywhere but, Especially with this offensive line. But, but they're keeping us entertained right up to the last week, especially against the dreaded Ravens. You're right, but, you know, like Lee Corso, not so fast. And I think if some miraculous way... Are you about to tell me they're going to go on a Super Bowl run? If, if they somehow, miraculous way, the Jaguars do beat the Colts and the Colts struggle in Jacksonville like they have since 2014 and the Steelers get that win against the Ravens and they get into the playoffs you're saying they got as good a chance as anybody to go to the bowl this is the year this is the year that anything can happen look the COVID a guy can be out in a second wow. COVID can help you decimate a home think about it team. think about it think about it think about all these teams that are missing these top players and the Steelers most of their top guys have already had it, so they're not going to get it now. Hey, I love your optimism. I absolutely I, I love your optimism. I think they get in. I think, anything's possible. I think anything's possible. I think yeah, but we have no linebackers. We have no offensive line. You don't think that uh, somebody's going to exploit that? You got the ultimate competitor with Ben Roethlisberger. Wow, a, a who star, doesn't want to go? Who doesn't want to go? And a star rookie running back in Najee Harris. And then you got... The sack I, man, T.J. Watt. Steelers Nation, I never... You got a chance. I never expected chance. this segment to go this way with Ben Roethlisberger uh, uh, being touted by uh, Mike here taking us all the way to the Super Bowl. I'm but I like it. there's a chance. It gives you optimism and hope. We'll know Sunday evening. All right. Small chance, there's a chance. Okay? It's like Dumb and Dumber. So <laughs> you're me, there's a chance. What's the if, if they get in... I think there's a, a chance. I, I, I think if they get in, they might w they'll win that first playoff game. You know what's the but most I don't annoying? Know if they can get in. What it, the it, most it, annoying it, sound in the world is? <laughs> Here we go, Ravens. Here we go. All right, I'm Tank. He's Mike. That's he, Bear. He's Bear. We're keeping him here with us close today. Steelers talk talk. We'll pick it up after we beat the Ravens and we head into the playoffs.